families are joining a class action lawsuit filed against Seattle Children's Hospital. The latest family says their baby girl got sick during the window of time when Children's reopened its operating rooms before shutting them down again. Now, Kyra Seven's Dee Dee's son is live right now at the hospital, and Dee Dee, their little baby, is still fighting for her life. She is still right here at Children's Hospital. Basically, she needed surgery right after birth because of a congenital heart defect. Her mom tells me that Children said it was safe to bring her child here, so she did, but now that baby has mold in her heart. Here is a picture of baby Elizabeth Hutt. Her face now joins the faces of these other kids in this class action lawsuit who all got sick while they were here at Children's Hospital. Baby Elizabeth Hutt, who goes by Beth, is now five months old. She spent her whole life at the hospital. Her first surgery took place at five days old. Mom Katie Hutt says they heard about the aspergillus mold problem at Children's, but in July, Children's announced the issue was fixed and reopened its operating rooms. So we kind of breathed a sigh of relief, like they found this mold before Beth was born, and it's going to be all taken care of. Her first heart surgery was in late August. She needed another surgery on November 7th. A few days later, Children's discovered more mold, leading the hospital's CEO to apologize and shut down most operating rooms again. At the time, we believed that these were isolated incidents. And that they hadn't put the dots together, whatever that meant. That's their job to put the dots together and to have a, face, a safe premises. A few weeks after that, doctors found that the Hutz baby girl had aspergillus mold in her heart. I had a lot of mom guilt about, you know, timing of surgeries and did I do my proper research? And they assured me that there was this was out of my control. Um, so that was nice to hear because as a mom, you know, yeah. Baby Beth is still at Children's fighting for her life. Some of the others named in the lawsuit include families of infant Logan Schaefer, who died in 2005, three year old Aiden Wills, who died in 2009, 16 year old Anna Hernandez, who died in 2014, and 12 year old Ian Gunnell, who died in 2019. The class action also refers to a previous lawsuit from 2005 involving the Patnode family. An aspergillus infection left their daughter permanently disabled. We've accused them of a cover up. We feel almost a, a moral obligation to be part of this because uh, things have to change. Children didn't have any comment today on the lawsuit, but announced last week it reopened three operating rooms and that over the next several weeks, it's working to install more in-room HEPA filtration systems. And while that work is happening, those operating rooms will remain closed. Live in Seattle tonight, DD Sun, Cairo 7 News. Neto News projects IT team investigation. A Middleburg mom raising a two-year-old girl with chronic respiratory problems says mold in their rental home is making her child's condition worse. And she says the rental company that manages the property is not doing enough to make the home safe for her toddler. I had a quarter inch of mold and just organic growth over these vents. And my daughter here, she's on breathing treatments, okay? So that's a big concern. Mallory Teschendorf says the mold in her rental home has been an ongoing problem that the management company should have taken care of months ago. News for Jack's reporter Eric Avanye joins us live. So when did Teschendorf first notice the problem, Eric? Yes, well, Teschendorf said the problem actually began last summer when heavy rains caused a flooding to that home that she is currently renting. Now, she says that excess water and humidity humidity caused a mold to grow under the floor behind the wall. And get this, even in the air vents. As Mallory Teschendorf plays with her two-year-old daughter, Ellie, on the floor of their living room, she worries about her child's health. You want a healthy environment for your children, Mommy, and you want a safe environment. Cakes. And I can't even provide that to cakes. her when they're leaving my floor in my house like this and refusing to do what's asked. Teschendorf says she has asked Main Street Renewal, the company that manages the home she rents, to get rid of the mold that has been growing inside the home since the summer of last year. These are pictures of the mold that was growing inside the air vents and behind the walls. And this is video she recorded of a maintenance worker blowing the vents with a hose. Teschendorf says this was not enough to kill the mold. They said they did an eye test um, and that it was fine. Uh, and then they spray painted over the vents. Experts say painting over mold only hides mold for a short period of time, but does not kill mold spores or prevent the spores from spreading in the air and being inhaled. 
Three-year-old Ellie suffers from chronic respiratory problems that require her to undergo this doctor-prescribed treatment every day. So if mold spores are spreading from the air, it's hurting her condition. And then there's an issue with the floor. Teschendorf says last summer, a storm caused flooding, which left water under the floor for several months. That water and humidity caused mold to grow under the laminate wood, which had to be removed. This is a ring security video of a worker removing one of the floor panels. Over the past three months, they have progressively just taken little pieces of my floor and wall out, um, and now it has left me with this. A home with half the floor ripped up and the other half presumably with more mold under the laminate wood, not to mention paint covering the mold on the air vents. In these back and forth emails with the company, she asked to have the mold tested beyond an eye test, but she tells News for Jax her request went unanswered. This is a copy of her lease agreement that specifically addresses mold prevention. In the first paragraph, it clearly advises renters to promptly report moisture problems and mold growth to the property manager. I contacted Main Street Renewal to get their side of the story and to ask ask if this process is taking months to fix the problem and if the mold was professionally tested. The company sent me this statement that says in part, we continue to work with our residents to make necessary repairs to this home and we are eager to resolve this matter for our resident. Consistent with our policy for residents experiencing longer term repair projects, we have offered to find a new home for this resident at no cost in another of our properties. We are focused every day on providing safe, secure and high quality housing for a America's renters. Teschendorf says Main Street Renewal did in fact offer her the opportunity to move to another property, but says the locations they were offering were $400 more than the $1,600 she is currently paying for rent. Uh -oh. While this issue lingers on, Teschendorf says she is just hoping her daughter's condition doesn't go further downhill as a result of the air quality in her home. Now, it's worth mentioning that Teschendorf did, in fact, file a complaint with the Better Business Bureau and says she is now considering uh, getting an attorney to go after that rental company. Now, coming up at 11, you're going to hear what the Better Business Bureau has to say about this rental company, along with the hundreds of complaints that have been filed nationwide against the same company. Reporting live, Eric Avigny, Channel 4, The Local Station. Two Youngsville families want to share their stories after years of nightmares in what was supposed to be their dream homes. And now their stories will be told in the courtroom now that a class action suit for damages has been filed. Here's more in tonight's Dial Dalford investigation. Justin Pollock, his wife Anna, and their four children moved down south from Boston for his job and have lived in their Youngsville home since 2013. But it wasn't long before what was once their dream home quickly became a nightmare. Right away when we bought the home, we started having warranty issues with the house, mostly with windows leaking and moisture and humidity problems in the house. Same goes for Carissa Harrison and her family. They'd have to come in, they'd have to change the ductwork repeatedly because it was leaking condensation. They would they replaced plenum after plenum. They came in, they added a dehumidifier. Um, they would come in and they would put this glue and then all of a sudden this glue or mud, whatever they use, would just start dripping down like sweat and water. That was Carissa Harrison back in March of 2021. She and her family have since relocated out of state, but they drove back to show us the problem still hasn't been repaired more than a year later. We've filed warranty claims over and over and over and continuously they would come in and try to fix the issue, but it's been nothing but band-aids. Both the Pollocks and the Harrisons lived in the same neighborhood in D.R. Horton built homes along with subcontractor Bell Mechanical. While the companies have come out and made several repairs, the homeowners say the issues seem to be never ending. In the fall of 2016, they replaced that pair of windows and took it upon themselves to also replace our foyer window. And on New Year's Eve of 16 going into 17, we had water leaking so bad out of the foyer window that wasn't leaking in the first place that it was behind the paint and it was also coming out from the inside of the light switches to the point where it scared us enough that we had to go s turn off the circuit breakers in the house because it became a fire hazard and everything was arcing inside of it. The Pollock's daughter, Rachel, also developed asthma due to the mold growth. Her doctor connected the asthma to the exposure to aspergillus. An air quality and mold test of the home reveal an exact match between her disease and the mold growing inside the house. For the first six months or so, she was she had to be on a nebulizer three times a day, uh, having breathing problems. Yeah, all 
We had, we had to right. move out and go to a hotel for two months. A few doors down the road at the Harrisons in October of 2020, Carissa was learning a huge reason they had experienced so many problems with their brand new homes. The telephone recording between me and um, Leslie, which is uh, with DR Horton. Are y'all not building this same house anymore, or like this should have been installed from day one? Like, and then it's not. No, it's, it, it has nothing to do with us. I'll tell you what it is. It's the code that we have to build to. We build to the federal mandate code. And, and we're regulated by federal law. We built to that code. That code was not designed for very humid markets. And the man who wrote that law even said that it's not designed for very humid markets. But we still have to adhere to what the rest of the country has been mandated to do. That phone call is now a key piece of evidence in the latest development. A 36-page class action lawsuit filed on behalf of a Lafayette Parish couple and an unknown number of other homeowners who now find themselves in a similar situation after purchasing a home built in South Louisiana by D.R. Horton. Ten attorneys are handling the case. One of them, Lance Bill, says the ultimate goal is to ensure these hard-working, middle-class families get justice for not receiving the product they were promised when the home was purchased. It's about holding D.R. Horton accountable for their actions and inactions. Now, since the suit was filed in early March, hundreds of people who own D.R. Horton homes have already called to join the class action suit as of tonight. Email requests for comment from D.R. Horton have gone unanswered. If there's an ongoing issue in your neighborhood or community, or there's a story you would like me to investigate, send me an email at dialdalfred at klfy.com. And that is our top story tonight. A resident at the Brook Apartments in Temple wants out of her lease after discovering a major mold problem. Yeah, this is serious stuff. This same apartment complex has had water damage in the past. Six News reporter Adriana Alexander spoke to the resident who's now searching for a new place to stay. She joins us live in studio. Adriana? Chris Lindsay, Severiana, Aris Mindy has been living in the Brook Apartments for over a year and noticed mold growing around her apartment in March. Not long after, she took pictures of the mold on her walls and inside the vents in her apartment. She's even stopped using her AC because breathing in the mold, she says, was making her very sick. She noticed her apartment manager about the mold around her apartment and asked to break her lease. Their response, according to Iris Mendo, was because the apartment complex was purchased by another company before she reported mold in her unit. The company that now owns the Brook Apartments is not able to let her out of her lease for free. I took it to the office this morning and I said, um, like, what can y'all do about this? Like, what's it? What's the plan now? And so she said that she has to talk to her district manager about what to figure out. And I told her that I do want to get out my lease because I sh this is un uninhabitable. So I, I can't live in this situation anymore. The Brook Apartments property manager declined to comment when I asked her about these claims. So what do you do and what are the options when someone is in a situation like this? We'll hear from our legal expert, Liz Mitchell, who will explain what rights renters have when renters are stuck in a lease at 10. Guys. Yeah, because renters do have rights and they are protected under certain guidelines. Curious exactly. to see what Liz yeah. has to say about that. Adriana, thank you.